Hello, it's Karen the Weekend Craftaholic. I'm back with you today to make a card. Um, this is one that I need to do for my friend, so I thought I would share it with you online. Now these couple of stamp sets I've not actually used at all. This is the first time using them. This cute little um, cactus one from Paper Roses and the Simon Says Stamp one is actually a freebie that I got with the order that I made in November and I absolutely love the design. Now you probably tell from the header of this YouTube video that this video is full of fails and I was going to head it out and I thought you know what I think we need to keep it real this is what happens when we're crafting so I wanted to show you how I recover from a couple of mistakes that I made. So first of all here you see me I always test my stamps on a scrap piece of paper before I go straight on and you can see here I've already chosen this lawn fawn paper I love this blue watercolour effect and quite brazenly decide to stamp straight on it rather than line it up or anything like that and I also make another impression on this Gina K masking tape um, masking paper as well because what I want to do with those geometric shapes is do a pattern on the back of this so I decide I'm going to mask off this little flower pot so this I presume it's succulents like some kind of cacti in the pot um, then I can do all of my beautiful geometric shapes around the outside but before I start that, I'm going to do a bit of Copic colouring. Now, full disclaimer, I'm not a colourist at all. So um, I wouldn't imagine anyone would come to my channel to see me Copic colouring because I'm just a beginner like most people. And again, I always use my scrap piece of paper just to make sure that I've got my colour orders in, op in the right order. Um, I tend to jump numbers by two and sometimes that doesn't always work out. So it's always good to give them a little try first. I also know a lot of people generally start with the lightest to dark then go back to light and for me I don't know it just seems like it's a waste of ink so I generally start with the darker then fade into the lighter colour and you can see that on a bit of a close up here as well with the greens. I've started um, assuming the shadow would be in the centre and this stamp's great for that actually it's got some shaded lines on there as well that you can follow as a guide. So I've got my darker colours on the inside or, um, of these leaves and then the lighter colours more on the outside as well. So not the most amazing colouring whatsoever but I am trying my best to use Copics and get better at it. Practice makes perfect and I'm quite pleased with that apart from obviously mistake number one is this little smudge that you see at the bottom of it. At this point I'm not too concerned about a little smudge because I figure once I finish the card I'll just put some kind of embellishment over it and try and hide it you know the sentiment or whatever I've not got that far in my plan yet. But I did definitely want to use all of these gorgeous hexagon shapes. And now what's great about them is some of them are full as well as some of the outline. So I'm very carefully trying to align them up here to keep the gaps in between as um, consistent as possible. And also to mix up the shapes and to mix up either the full or the solid shapes as well. Now this is where it goes all terribly wrong and first of all I stamp it down. I'm using the um, Catherine Pooler ink actually, the pigment ink, because that's a nice dark saturated colour. But when I stamp it the second time my card's obviously moved and it's a disaster. But I didn't want to have to redo my Copic colouring again and also waste that gorgeous long form paper. So I decided I'm going to cut this out and then just pick another background colour to use instead. So this is from the same pad, the watercolour pad. Again I'm just doing a very rough mark to make sure that I can cut this out with a nice little white border around. Now the Paper Roses, the Best Wishes die that I'm using, not sure if there is a coordinating die with that or not. I know when I bought it I particularly thought in mind that this was one that would be easy enough to fussy cut so I didn't worry too much about checking out any coordinating die. Of course now that I've got my scan and cut which I got for my birthday this year um, if I wanted to I could also use that. Now you may have noticed then when I put this against that lilac background is that the blue of that paper really shows through so now I'm just going to use a, again another way of covering up a mistake is using a, a white gel pen just to go over that so if ever you colour outside the lines you can always go back over with a white pen. I love these jelly roll pens this is a size 10 but I love the size 8 and 5s as well. Um, what I love about them is that they don't skip, they've got nice fluid, they don't, um, some of them, the Signo one I had used to just really come out too much and bubble up, but this one just has a really nice flow to it. So you can see that looks a lot crisper now that it's on, it's got rid of that mistake at the bottom as well. 
and as much as I love this this lilac colour it just seemed too plain so I decided to use an embossing folder just to make a bit more of an interest on that background. I'm not sure the name of it, I didn't keep the package in, I know it was a Kaiser Craft one though that I used. And I've decided because everything was going wrong that normally I would have put popped this up on some foam but I decided I'm just going to use some um, liquid glue as you could see and then that way if I did put it down in the wrong place I could still move it around and wiggle it around where I needed it to go. I am using a bit of foam here this is just the kids craft foam it's not adhesive at all it's a lot cheaper um, I've got all my scraps in my little drawer under my desk that I use and they're easy to reach for as well. Now when it comes to the sentiment if you've seen my sentiment videos you know that I've got all these little pockets full of them ready to go I really do like that black and white where it says hello gorgeous but it is going to a friend of mine who's in her 80s and I don't think she'd quite quite get it um, what drew me to this set actually was the sentiment that said best wishes so after playing around with this I decided to go back to the original sentiment to be honest at this point I was just putting off risking anything else going wrong which is why I pulled out the sentiments but I decided to stick with it I really do like the the font or the type of it as well and it is a little bit bigger than some of the others that I've already got so I've stamped out a few extras. Um, I ge generally do that when I'm stamping so I can keep it with the stamp as well. So next time around I don't have to go and hunt in for it. I can or s get all my stamping stuff out. I can just go and, and get the scrap that I've already done. On reflection, I think the finished card is actually looking better than what I was going to do with the pattern paper and using those hexagons. Um, I think the actual flower design in the background is probably a better overall effect anyway for a more senior person and I should have mentioned actually as well I when you saw me scratching off I just wanted to take the edge off some of those embossed flowers so I was just using a nail file a buffing nail file just to um, scratch away at some of that surface as well I've had these transparent dots for a while I've not managed to find time to use them in a project yet keep pulling them out but they're too big for memory decks they don't really fit a layout been determined to use them and I do use them in this card but when you see the final shots and I look back and see the final shot I do wish I'd just left it as is and not put any other embellishments on it I hope you like that I hope it gave you a bit of confidence to also not worry too much if your designs don't go quite as planned there's always a workaround but I hope you enjoyed that thanks for watching